roads that have to go. But our world is the best world. Hey, 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 no! an unusual course <laughs> with some of the most brilliant creative students from all across the campus uh, <clears throat> it, it just was a joy to be involved with uh, and they took the whole stage performance aspect of this way too seriously um, uh, <laughs> and it became this campus phenomenon every year people would line up for it it was very flattering and uh, it gave kids a chance of a sense of excitement of putting on a show for people who were then excited about it. And I think that that's one of the best things you can give somebody, the chance to show them what it feels like to make other people get excited and happy. I mean, that's a tremendous gift. We always tried to involve the audience, whether it was people with glow sticks or batting a beach ball around or driving. Yeah. <clears throat> This is really cool. This technology actually got used at the Spider-Man 3 premiere in LA. So the audience was controlling something on the screen. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I don't have a, a class picture from every year, but I dredged all the ones that I do have. And all I can say is that what a privilege and an honor it was to teach that course for something like 10 years. And um, all good things come to an end. And I stopped teaching that course uh, about a year ago. Um, people always ask me, what was my favorite moment? I don't know if you can have a favorite moment, but boy, there's one I'll never forget. <laughs> uh, this was a, a world with, I believe, a roller skating ninja. And one of the rules was that we performed these things live, and they all had to really work, and the moment it stopped working, we went to your backup videotape. And this was very embarrassing. So we have this ninja on stage, and he's doing this roller skating thing, and the world, it did not crash gently. <laughs> And I come out, and I believe it was Steve Audio, wasn't it? Was it? Where is he? Okay, where's Steve? Ah, my man, Steve Audio. And talk about quick on your feet, right? I say, Steve, I'm sorry, but your world has crashed, and we're going to go to videotape. And he pulls out his ninja sword and says, I am dishonored, blah, and just drops. <laughs> And so I think it's very telling that my favorite moment in 10 years of this high technology course was a brilliant ad lib. And then when the videotape is done and the lights come up, he's lying there lifeless and his teammates drag him off. It was really a fantastic moment. Um, and the course was all about bonding. People used to say, well, you know, what's going to make for a good world? I said, I can't tell you beforehand, but right before they present it, I can tell you if the world's good just by the body language. If they're standing close to each other, the world is good. All right. And BVW was a pioneering course. And uh, um, I, I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, it, it wasn't easy to do. Uh, and I was given this uh, when I stepped down from the ETC, and I think it's, it's emblematic. If you're going to do anything that's pioneering, you will get those arrows in the back, 
and you just have to put up with it. I mean, everything that could go wrong did go wrong, but at the end of the day, a whole lot of people had a whole lot of fun. Uh, when you've had something for 10 years that you hold so precious, it's the toughest thing in the world to hand it over. And the only advice I can give you is find somebody better than you to hand it to. And that's what I did. There was this uh, kid at the VR studio way back when. And you didn't have to spend very long in Jesse Shell's orbit to go, the force is strong in this one. <laughs> and one of my, great, my two greatest accomplishments, I think, for Carnegie Mellon were that I got Jessica Hodgins and Jesse Shell to come here and join our faculty. And I was thrilled when I could hand this over to Jesse. And to no one's surprise, he has really taken it up to the next notch. And uh, you know, the, the course is in more than good hands, it's in better hands. Uh, but it was just one course. And then we really took it up a notch. And we, uh, we created what I would call the dream fulfillment factory. Uh, Don Marinelli and I got together, and with the university's blessing and encouragement, we made this thing out of whole cloth that was absolutely insane, should never have been tried. All the sane universities didn't go near this kind of stuff, creating a tremendous opportunistic void. Uh, so the Entertainment Technology Center was all about artists and technologists working in small teams to make things. It was a two-year professional master's degree. And <clears throat> Don and I were two kindred spirits. We're very different. Anybody who knows us knows that we're very different people. Uh, and we like to do things in a new way. And the truth of the matter is that we're both a little uncomfortable in academia. I used to say that I'm uncomfortable as an academic because I come from a long line of people who actually worked for a living. So. Uh, I detect nervous laughter. All right. uh, and I want to stress, Carnegie Mellon is the only place in the world that the ETC could have happened. By far, the only place. Uh, so, okay, this picture was Don's idea, okay? Uh, and we like to refer to this picture as uh, Don Marinelli on guitar and Randy Pausch on keyboards. But we really did play up the left brain, right brain, and it worked out really well that way. Um, uh, Don is an intense guy. <laughs> and Don and I shared an office. And at first it was a small office. We shared an office for six years. Right? Now, those of you who know Don know he's an intense guy. Right? And uh, you know, given my current condition, somebody was asking me, uh, this is a terrible joke, but I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, because I know Don will forgive me. Uh, somebody said, given your current condition, have you thought about whether you're going to go to heaven or hell? And I said, I don't know, but if I'm going to hell, I'm due six years for time served. But uh, <laughs> I kid. Sharing an office with Don was really like sharing an office with a tornado, right? There was just so much energy, and you never knew which trailer was next, right? But you knew something exciting was going to happen. And... And there was so much energy. And I